These are the practice problems for lesson 10 from unit one. And this is eighth grade. <clears throat> in this first problem, you're supposed to show that this triangle in the upper right corner is congruent to the triangle in the lower left corner by taking this triangle in the lower left corner and using a rigid transformation to move it over here to the upper right corner. By doing that, then you can prove or you can demonstrate that these two triangles are equal or are congruent. And the way that I figure out how to do this is to do a rotation and to do a rotation around the center of the flag. But first of all, I actually measured in the student workbook the lengths of these sides. And so this side here matches this side up here. It's 8 and 3 tenths centimeters in the workbook, and this is 7 and 2 tenths centimeters. This side matches this side. So you can see that, and what we've been doing for the last couple of lessons is rotating things 180 degrees, and you can see that if this side right here rotates 180 degrees and ends up up here, it's going to end up parallel, and it's going to be the um, equal distance from the center of rotation. So if you connect the corresponding points, you can find that center of rotation. So here I've connected those corresponding points. So for a 180 degree rotation, the center of rotation is the midpoint between the corresponding points. So that point is right here. So connect this point to this point up here, they correspond. Connect this point to this point down here, they correspond. And connect this point to this point down here, they correspond. So this point right here is going to rotate up, end up up here. This point is going to rotate around, end up over here. And this point is going to rotate around and end up down here. So that rigid transformation shows that this length again moves up here. They are equal. They are congruent. And they are parallel in this case because it's a 180 degree rotation and they're an equal distance from the center of rotation like this blue side as well. It's going to rotate around and end up over here an equal distance on the opposite side of the center of rotation and parallel. That's problem number one. Problem number two is work with another flag. And what you're going to show in this um, problem is you can move triangle one to triangle two through a transformation. You can move triangle one to triangle three and triangle one to triangle four. So through those rigid transformations, what you are then proving is that all of these four triangles are congruent. They are all equal. So to move triangle one to triangle two, you can do a reflection. So the line of reflection is the midpoint between the corresponding points. So you have to find that midpoint so you can measure it. You can use Doceri to find it. And then each point is going to move in a perpendicular direction at a right angle and an equal distance on the other side of the line of reflection. So they're going to move from this point over to here, and these two points are going to move over to here as a reflection. To move triangle 1 to triangle 3, you can do another reflection. And the line of reflection now is the horizontal axis. It's midway in between. And again, you're going to move each corresponding point in a perpendicular distance across the line of reflection to an equal distance on the other side. So this point moves an equal distance to the other side to here, and these points move to the other side over here. So reflection. And finally, to move triangle 1 to triangle 4, and they want you to do these transformations in just one step. You can go through a couple of reflections to get it there. But to do in one step, you can go through a rotation, and that is a 180 degree rotation. So remember that the center of rotation is the midpoint between the connecting the corresponding points. So if I take this point up here and connect all the way down here, and then take this point right here and connect it, and this point right here and connect it across, they all intersect at the very center of the flag. That's the center of rotation. And notice once again, for a 180 degree rotation, the sides end up parallel on the opposite side of the center of rotation. All right, so all of these four triangles are congruent. 
the larger triangles up here are not congruent. They are a larger size. They're actually, actually scaled triangles, and we're going to get into scaling in the next unit. Okay, problem number three. And they want you to move line L to line K using a translation, using a rotation, and using a reflection. Well, the translation is pretty easy. You just slide it up. And the rotation. So first of all, to find the center of rotation. So since it's a parallel line and it's not, um, it doesn't match line L, it doesn't just map right to line L, that means the center of rotation is not on the line. So you can choose two corresponding points. You just choose a point here and connect it over here and then find the midpoint. Remember the center of rotation for a 180 degree rotation is the midpoint between the two corresponding points. So that midpoint, now you can use doceri. Doceri will take this line and just move it close to this line in doceri. It will snap to the midpoint. So that's the midpoint right there. And then now that you know the midpoint, place a point on the other side, line K, and then draw just draw a line through the, cen the center of rotation to the other side. And so this would be the corresponding point on the other side. Now to show the rotations, it's always a nice idea to draw the circles. I want to do that. I'm going to do that to show you. So this point here is going to move from line L and it's going to rotate 180 degrees and it's going to end up on line K. This point here is going to move from line L and at this very same time, because those points are connected, I'm going to move over here um, around the center of rotation and end up on line K. And so what I did to make this a little bit easier to see is I divided this circle, this path, from line L to line K up into fourths. So this is one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. And I also divided the same path um, from line L to line K for the larger circle, the point farther away. So this is one-fourth, one one-half, um, three-fourths. And so they're going to move together. So I'm going to connect those points. There you can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to connect those points. So this is the, the line segment that's going to rotate around. It's going to start at zero. It's going to go one-fourth of the way around on both circles. And it's connected. It has to go the same amount, the same distance, um, the same fractional distance, I should say. It's going to go halfway around three-fourths of the way around. And notice when it gets all the way around, it now forms a parallel line um, that runs on line K. Basically, it is line K. So we've rotated L to K, 180-degree rotation. And find the reflection, a reflection. Just find the midpoint between the two lines. Connect them. You can use doceri to do that. You have to make sure that it's a right angle. You have to find a right angle. And then you're going to move it. Um, it's an equal distance on the other side. So the reflection moves from here through the line of reflection and to the other side. All right, so now what they want you to do is move line L to I, line M. And um, can't translate it. You have to actually go through it. You have to translate and do a little bit of a rotation. So we're just going to look at a rotation and a reflection. And so to find the two points that correspond, just draw a circle and where the circle intersects line L and then keep going and the circle intersects line P. Those are corresponding points. They are points. This point here is going to rotate around and end up on P right here. So this tells you where the center of rotation is. It's the center of that circle. So now you can draw another circle with the same center of rotation and where that circle intersects line L. And then it's going to rotate around at the same time and intersect line P. And I divided those paths up into fourths once again. So this is one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and then four-fourths, and then one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and four-fourths. 
So if I move them both one fourth, and so this line is now rotating around two fourths, one half, three fourths, and finally four fourths. So it makes it a little bit easier to see the rotation. And this one is pretty hard to visualize, actually. So you have to think about it a little bit, go back a little bit. And actually, to make it a little bit easier, what I did is I created triangles. So if you rotate triangles around, a little bit easier to see this rotation. So this line segment, this side of the triangle right here, is going to end up right over here as it rotates. I never did figure out this angle of rotation. It rotates over to P. That angle of rotation is the angle that's right here as L meets P. So it's less than 90 degrees. Uh, it looks like maybe it's about a 60 degree rotation. All right, so we're going to rotate the triangle around. Just keep them connected. It's a little bit easier to keep the size if you have a triangle rather than just a, a single line. And finally, when this side matches over here on P, that is a, let's call it a 60 degree rotation going from here over to here. And finally, a reflection to go from L to P. It's a little bit more complicated. And to do that, I'm going to draw a couple circles. I'm going to put the center of rotation right in the center of the figure there where L intersects with P. I'm going to draw this angle. So this is angle along L, and, and the other side of the angle is along P. And what you're going to end up doing is reflecting this side over to this side which means you have to find a line of reflection that's halfway in between. So if I draw these two circles, I know that the distance from the center to right here is the same as the distance from the center to right here along L, because they are both radiuses of the circle. And likewise, the distance from the center to the circle, the larger circle, is the same as the distance from the center to this larger circle along that intersects L. So now if I can just find the midpoint between them using this point here and this point and this point here and this point, then I'm going to find the line of reflection. The line is right in the middle. All right, so if I connect these points, I can use doseri. Or you can measure it if you're doing this on pencil and paper. You can measure it and just um, take a half of that length. But in doseri, you can draw lines that are going to snap to the midpoint. So it makes your life a little bit easier. So this is the midpoint right here, and this is the midpoint right here. So I placed points on those midpoints. I connected them, and you do see that they go through the center of rotation. They have to. All right, so now we have the center. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. They go through the center to form a line of reflection. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to add one more down here. So that um, because this triangle here is going to reflect over to here, and these two triangles are going to reflect up here, or actually this is just one bigger triangle, it's going to reflect up here. So this point is going to reflect, this is the halfway point, it's going to end up up here. This point is going to go um, to the line of reflection, and then again the same distance is going to end up over here. This point's going to move in the opposite direction. These are all perpendicular to the line of reflection. They form 90 degree angles. A little bit easier to see if I color them in. And this line is now going to reflect over to this line right here. Like that. So this triangle reflected over here. And this line that was right here now reflected over here. This triangle reflected in the opposite direction over here. And the line likewise reflected in the opposite direction over here because it's on the other sides of the midpoints. Okay, for this um, problem, you're going to move this point right here. So a point at 3, 4. So this point is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it says move that point 4 units left. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So now it's at a negative 1. 4. So it's negative 1 along the x-axis and 4 along the y-axis. And then um, reflect that point across the x-axis. So it's going to go across the x-axis. It's going to go an equal distance on the other side. And it has to move at a right angle. So this is 
It's going to move in a vertical direction straight down and an equal distance on the other side. And it's going to end up here at negative 1, negative 4, and then translate that point down two more units. 1, 2, and you end up at negative 1, negative 6. So that is problem number 4. And finally, in the last problem, they want you to rotate this triangle right here. I should have colored it in. But they're going to rotate this triangle 90 degrees. So this triangle is going to rotate up to here 90 degrees. Then they want you to go back to the same triangle and rotate it 180 degrees. Well, 180 degrees, remember, you're going to form um, parallel lines on the opposite side of the center of rotation. So here's this line is right here. So if I connect these corresponding points, a little bit hard to see in all this mess. The center of rotation is right here. And this side is going to rotate all the way around and end up right here. It's going to end up parallel. So that's a 180 degree rotation. And then they want you to go back here and rotate this 270 degrees to right here. Well, you could take the 90 degree rotation and rotate that 180 degrees. Because notice that this triangle now is going to flip all the way around. 180 degrees is going to end up here. So this side is parallel to where this side started out. Or you could do the 270 degree rotation, whichever you like. And this line, this arrow right here is 270 degrees. I just didn't wrote, um, label it. All right, so once you've done all those rotations, you color it in. And what does the figure look like that you get? It looks like a pinwheel. So this is the triangle you start out with. This is a 90 degree rotation. This is the triangle I start out with. This is a 180 degree rotation. Triangle I started out with, and this is a 270 degree rotation. So notice that the 90 degree rotation, you rotate that 180 degrees, that makes sense. You're going to end up at 270 degrees. So this side is parallel with this side, and this is 180 degree rotation, the blue to the red. So this side is parallel with this side. So lots of stuff to think about. It begins to make sense as you look at it. So this is the end of the problem set or the practice problems for lesson. 10.